All right. Welcome to Cape Cast. Brandon? Hey. How are you doing this evening? Pretty good. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. Finally, you and me again. No, Just like old times. No other people here. Whew. So we can, we can our, be excited about stuff. Let our hair down. Don't all right. Judged. Finally. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Brandon. Yeah. Let it flow. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> That's very good. One. Um, so tonight we wanted, we just wanted to touch on. There was the uh, Disney investors, I guess I call it Investors Day, mm-hmm. um, and we wanted to kind of touch on some of the stuff that was announced, uh, both on the Star Wars and Marvel side. Um, I don't think we've actually talked about Marvel on this podcast yet. So yeah, <laughs> what's that? We're uh... <laughs> I, it's just on the show notes, so I just said it. I don't know what it means. <laughs> we like Marvel, guys, okay? We don't want to give that vibe. We have, we do. obviously, a little bit of a preference. But, I uh, loved Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. It was great. It was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right. Uh, um, so, what do you think? We start with Star Wars? Yeah, we could do Star Wars. Cool. Um, so I guess I'll just kind of do a quick little rundown of the You want to tell them where the they can find they... us just in case they don't know? Sure. Let's do that. Okay. That's a great idea. All right. <laughs> um, so if you guys uh, are interested in talking geek movies at all, following us on Twitter is the best way to do that. Um, obviously, too, we love chatting with you down in the comments. So feel free to do that. Um, and I'll also plug our weekly movie review podcast that we um, do called Cinema Machine. Um, and the best place to find us there is at Cinema Machine Pod on Instagram. And we also will post all of our Capecast stuff to that account. So it's kind of your um, one shot kill for everything Capecast and Cinema Machine. Indeed. <clears throat> is that good for you, Brandon? Good job. To do a good job. I think yeah. Okay, I think you hit all the the right points there. So yeah. Great. We're good. Good. Good, good. All right. On to Star Wars. Yep. Um, so they announced like 10, at least 10 projects. Um, mm-hmm. And it's funny because <laughs> you texted me early in the day and you're like, you going to watch the uh, Disney Investors Day thing? I was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> and just because I, you know, I didn't expect that. I was expecting maybe they would have something for. I don't know, a Boba Fett show or Ahsoka Tano or whatever. I didn't expect them to like dump <laughs> like four years worth of material on us in one night. Yeah. It was a lot. Um, We're just hitting so two I, factions of that. I mean, it was like a four or five hour investor oh, was crazy. call type thing. I was, I was like checking Twitter. I was watching it. Um, cause now on your phone that by the way first time i've ever used the picture little picture. feature where you can like yeah, yeah. it's great <laughs> on your iphone yeah. um but like twitter couldn't even keep up with everything they were announcing like all the official bloggers were like it was like typo have like they just didn't have time to yeah. even like proof the stuff i was listening out. to a podcast today actually and they were talking <laughs> about how they only put like one writer on uh covering this investor call <laughs> it's like joe blow mm-hmm. and uh while things were dropping, they had to like do an all hands on deck call because there was just <laughs> so much stuff <laughs> yeah. being dropped I, to I cover could it totally all. Totally see it. Yeah. Um, I was like furiously texting you links because you you were saying that you like you you watched all this all the boring spent little, yeah basically two and a half hours. <laughs> I listened to the first part. Uh, basically everything until Bob Iger comes on so all the like hulu stuff and <laughs> all the sports stuff uh yeah. your favorite and then subject. i had i had a my daughter had a basketball scrimmage and so i was like you know radio sound i, I was kind of you know off the grid during that and then when i got out i, I, I expected it to be over i got yeah. out and flipped it on and they had just gotten to marvel stuff mm-hmm. um but i had kind of you had kind of texted me a few things uh about the star wars stuff that had been dropping so yeah, yeah it's nuts um so just to kind of list off before we kind of chime in on what we want to talk about 
They announced a Rangers of the New Republic show, a Obi-Wan Kenobi show, mm-hmm. a show called The Acolyte, an Ahsoka Tano show, um, which I guess they just called Ahsoka, um, yep. Lando, a Lando Calrissian show, uh, Rogue Squadron, a movie. Uh, I think that was a theatrical movie, right? Yeah. Theatrical release movie. Yep. Um, the Bad Batch, which I think is a animation. It's a spinoff um, of like uh, Clone Wars. Clone Wars, yeah. They had a Bad yeah. Batch episode um, in this last season of Clone Wars. Gotcha. And it's a Mandalorian-centric uh, gotcha. thing. Um, and then they announced Andor. Uh, well, some Andor's. of this stuff is not necessarily announcements. Andor has been in production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kenobi sure. they had, they announced. had title cards yeah, and yeah. stuff that they in little clips versus the stuff that was already had a little bit of uh, press behind it. Right. Um, but this is Andor was a Rogue One spinoff, um, a droid story, and Visions, which kind of seems like it's the Star Wars version of What If a little bit. To me, Marvel's what if thing that they're doing also, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, so we can just kind of you got the list there. We can kind of just roll through um mm-hmm. the shows that just announced. And if you've got anything, that I guess, do you want to hit the two that are spinoffs of Mandalorian first, which would be I guess Rangers of the New Republic and sure. Ahsoka. Sure. Um, I don't really know much about the Rangers of the New Republic as far as the top like. The title is basically all I know about it, and that it's connected to the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Do you have? The so taste? I I do not. They didn't really go into, from what I saw at least, they didn't really go into what that one was. But my guess would be this is connected to Timothy Olyphant from, um, the first episode. That would be my guess. Okay. Um, it just seemed it kind of to me it seemed this season that there was a lot of really positive feedback to his character and to Ahsoka and mysteriously they have shows. What is the connection so, with him and the Rangers? Oh, no, I just, uh, it just seems like a Western thing to me that mm. I, that's all I have to go on. I don't, I'm not saying I saw anything. I got you. Um, I do. And it, may, it may be something completely different, but that's just my, yeah. Um, I guess. I don't know. Uh I like I don't know what other material they would pull I guess from Mandalorian that they've Yeah, I don't know. I didn't um the Oliphant connection had never really crossed my mind with it, but maybe if that's the case, my interest went down a little bit because I was not a big fan of him in this universe. Sure. Um I, like just looking I think too, like looking back on that episode, and this is all conjecture, like I said, but it kind of seems out of place a little bit if it wasn't a kind of soft pilot for it. Uh, um, it maybe, but I mean, it's also a little bit of, you know, kind of star casting with just like having like a, a little, like a decently big celebrity play a key role. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know. I mean, I don't think his character is bad. I just, he was just Tim the Oliphant, plus being Tim Fitley. Like, he's the same guy in everything that he's in for right. the most part. Uh, he's just distracting to me in this world. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm definitely much more interested in Ahsoka, and we kind of even talked about that in her episode, her, um, the Jedi this season, and how we kind of you know felt like it was a no brainer that. That was a little bit of a, a soft pilot for her, mm-hmm. um, that episode. And that's kind of why so, I think that that whole like it Thrawn just, just so you drop. Know, it looks like it looks like people are speculating that it could involve um Cardoon and Timothy Oliphant. Okay. Yeah. Who knows? Anyways. Two of the characters that are <laughs> Top priority. I mean, whatever. We'll see. Agreed. That's, a, that's right kind of the good you. thing this about is not that's the, the good thing about this list is that there's kind of something for everybody for the most part. That's what. Well, that's what I like about it is, you know, there's a lot of criticism about like, just kind of this 
being like too much all at once. Yeah. Like well, I kind of look at it in a different way. Like watch what you want to watch. And but also it's not like they're dropping watch. all this at the same time. Mia, it's a lot. It's, mm-hmm. it's a big, you know, info dump right now. Sure. But this stuff's going to be scattered throughout the next four or five years. As far as and if the, well, the other thing too is if the Mandalorian is any indication of how they're going to operate with these shows, it's not like they're going to be stretching creative talent thin. It's they're just kind of like, letting different people work on different episodes and it just doesn't seem like it's like you're going to have John Favreau doing (laughs) 10 shows, right? you know? So, um, um, but yeah, so you were talking about Ahsoka. I was just saying, yeah, I mean, we, we kind of expected that to happen as far as an Ahsoka centric show. And I, I've kind of had been of the opinion that the whole Thrawn drop was, just for her show. I don't see it play a factor in Mandalorian personally, at least not, yeah. not yet. I feel like that was just like, this is where we're kind of teeing up her for her series. And, and we'll, mm-hmm. we'll get more info about that and kind of, kind of divulge into that as her show uh, comes to fruition. Sure. But yeah. I mean, that's exciting to me because I love that episode. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I think that it was, one of the most talked about episodes, uh, if not the most talked about so far. Um, so it's kind of a no brainer. I'll be interested to, I'll be interested to see if, and like you're saying, the Thrawn thing makes sense that, you know, they could just kind of take it and run with the Nasoka show, but there's also, um, they could also, if Thrawn is meant to be part of the Mandalorian sooner than later, they could also do a, show about Ahsoka probably between Clone Wars and um, the episode that we just watched from Mandalorian. Like I'm sure there's a lot of material. You know, Didn't they say that it, time in there I that think they, they announced that it took place during the Mandalorian timeline, right? I'm pretty okay. sure that's well, what they go. said. Yeah. Okay. Um, could be wrong on that, but I think that's what I read. Um, but, no, I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they could definitely, it doesn't, I guess, I guess they could still tie in that material if they wanted to. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know. See, so you and I both are in the camp of not watching Clone Wars, not knowing a lot about Ahsoka besides like she was, uh, an apprentice of Anakin. And I remember Mm -hmm. there being like, I kind of remember like tangentially hearing about this, like Ahsoka lives campaign. So maybe at one point in the story, she was presumed dead and I guess she came back or something. Mm. Um, I, I need to do a little bit of research on her besides yeah. the small, like, um, cliff notes that I know. I guess her. that's something too, that could potentially, cause you know, Disney model, you imagine all these are going to interweave to some degree. Um, you could, with the and we kind of jump into the Obi Wan Kenobi series now, but mm-hmm. there could potentially be some um, material that crosses over there with Anakin. Uh, yeah, I mean that's true. That would be really cool to see, honestly. I, I um, and I guess that's ten years after Revenge of the Sith. I wonder, mm-hmm. did, have we got a defined time? As far as when Mando takes place, I know it's after. Yeah, you know, that's a good I know question. It's, well, see, so yeah, that wouldn't even that wouldn't come into play because if if Kenobi is taking place ten years after Revenge of the Sith, Mando takes place after Return of the Jedi, then those would be two. Right, separate. but if so, you know, but you, you what you're saying is about. she could she could show up in that as a younger version right. of her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that could be Not cool, that, but yeah. I, for some reason, I feel like this Kenobi thing is going to be pretty contained. I don't feel like they're. I honestly I, hope so. I don't feel like they're teeing that up to be a series. I think it's more going to be like a mini series, like one off. Dude, there is so much fun that can be had with that. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> well, um, get to the big thing that was announced for Kenobi. Uh, y- y'all, let you, yeah. You say so it. go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> So Hayden Christensen was announced as returning as Anakin slash Darth Vader. Yeah. Um, which I <laughs> is awesome. Not as surprising now, considering we don't see him in as much yeah. material 
Um, but it will be considering the nature of Vader's character. Yeah. You know, you imagine they're going to do James Earl Jones with the voice until he can't do it anymore. Right. Um, and he's completely <laughs> covered from head to toe in costume. Yeah, so it's a conversation. And he's that burnt you're... to a crisp alive. Right. Of it. So yeah, I mean, it, we it really is, want to use you, but uh, it's curious. To s- <laughs> no one's gonna know it's you. Right. Is he just being hired as like a stunt performer? Is that like yeah. what he's become? <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's flashback sequences where he can actually be, himself, yeah. you know, more of himself uh, mm-hmm. instead of. But also, like that's that that's the biggest like question mark for me is how is he going to be used? Uh, because it's my understanding that Vader can't, you know, he if he takes his helmet off, that says he can't breathe. So yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be spending a lot of time in that little uh, little black ball that he <laughs> that opens up in right. the Empire back to tank or whatever too. Yeah, yeah. um, or back to is it Vacta or Bacta? Back to, Back to okay, um, yeah, it'll be. I mean, I'm excited. It's it's so it's it's funny seeing how like much of a 180 people have kind of taken on uh, on Hayden uh, as far yeah. as and and just the prequels in general. I think people have kind of like mm-hmm. given them second chance. Uh, You've seen that with Mandalorian with the um, especially this season with the. Boba Fett stuff like mm-hmm. there's been just been a lot more of like nostalgia for those movies that were <laughs> you know hated for so long yeah and you know, still not the best but it's it's been kind of cool to see them um be treated a little bit more hospitably sure <laughs> yeah um but yeah I mean I know that the Kenobi thing is i think it's uh deborah chow directing i believe she's mm-hmm. directing all the episodes um which is new for the star wars shows at least I and mean, we only have one really to go by which is mandalorian but all both seasons of that have been different directors for each episode so this is mm-hmm. uh should be much more uh as far as having a a defined visual aesthetic and, and probably a more tight narrative uh, than some yeah. Mandalorian, uh, which will be welcomed in my opinion. Um, yep. But yeah, I'm excited about that. I've been excited for it since they announced it, um, but uh, glad that it's actually because it, it had been like rumored forever that you and McGregor was coming back in some form or fashion as Obi Wan. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, if if you look back on the prequels, he's like, if if I look back fondly on them, everything that I look back fondly on, he's involved with. He was yeah. awesome for the part. Yeah, he was great. Um, so it'll be cool to, and you can kind of tell just in recent years, like you can tell he looks back on the experience fondly, and he enjoyed it. <laughs> he enjoyed playing the character. Yeah. Um. Insert Which the is, gif you know, of him in the little uh, ship doing the little dance. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Um, yeah. So that I mean that will be that'll be a fun one. I think. So that one of the shows that they mentioned, um, that one and the next one that we'll talk about are the two that I'm most excited about. The next one being the acolyte. Mm-hmm. Um, so the way it's described is the acolyte is a mystery thriller that will take viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers and the final days of the high Republic era. Um, and they announced this and I, this, that was one of those where I just like dropped my phone to a little happy dance. <laughs> Cause I was just <laughs> like, I'm just so ready for, yeah, right. I'm just so ready for material. That's not like. Let's find another little <laughs> little niche in the Skywalker saga that they haven't explored. Like, yeah, I, there's so much potential in this world to, you know, just get out of the bubble and do cool stuff. And, um, really looking forward to this. So the High Republic, I believe, is like 
two or three hundred years before the prequels and the timeline. The High Republic, um, that's what the new book series that they've put out is going to be about, right? Isn't that what? Um, yep. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, that's a High Republic, Old Republic, all that stuff. I know you played the Old Republic games. Um, so good. I never did. So all that stuff is pretty much a mystery to me. It was um, such a – so I know – and I – it would be good to have Jeff on here to talk about this, but um, from what I understand, the High Republic is like kind of like the most the prime like prime Jedi in the timeline. Like that's mm-hmm. like when they were thriving. Yeah. Um, which gets me excited. Having played the Old Republic video games, those games are so cool because it's like that where like you go through, you go you know you go from like getting crystals for your lightsaber. Like I would just love to see like the actual Jedi foundation explained or explored more. I mean, Mm -hmm. I feel like this gives an opportunity to do that without being like bound by the whole, like, well, you know, it's, it's during Skywalker timeline and we know who the baddies are. We know who the good guys are. (laughs) Like, there's not, you know, there's just not a lot of like the flexibility is limited, I guess, working within, the existing no i agree and that's that's a good point because i think um a lot of the problems that i have with what we've seen so far as far as star wars output um at least in tv and film has been so heavily reliant on things or characters or time periods that we've already kind of you know touched upon and so that that I guess need to, to do all these like member berry type things. Um, right. Wouldn't be as, I guess the, you know, that wouldn't be, I don't assume it would be as, uh, prevalent with the, with this Uh type of, uh, you you really have like, it's a good, like, it's good too, because like, it's not like this is the first star Wars thing that's coming out in a long time. So I'm not going to feel that pressure to like, drop even if it's not like story related like drop like kitschy star wars things to service fanboys and stuff like it's just really yeah i mean i'm sure there will be those little nods and stuff for the people that know this era as far as the books and the games and things like that but for casual people like me uh right it'll it'll i'll be new and i will uh, that stuff be lost which will be good um so yeah, no, I'm excited about it. This, uh, I think it's it's Leslie, uh, is it Headland? Um, she, I think, did that Russian Doll TV series. Um, gotcha. That was. I don't know if it's still ongoing. I remember it coming out. It's got the what's her name, Natasha Leon. Um, gotcha. And I remember a lot of people hyping that one up when it came out, but I never caught it. But I think she's a yeah. I think she's like the showrunner of it, um, which is what she'll be in this show. Um, gotcha. I wonder. Yeah, it's it, it, it'll be cool. So it does look like just looking at the title card. Um, it, it, I mean, essentially, it looks like a <laughs> dark side lightsaber cut through it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I'm excited to see. I'm really, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing some new force sensitive villains and heroes pop up that like aren't, I mean, kind of like what we've been talking about, but just new, like be able to like really put your, for, I guess for them to really be able to put their creative hats on and like create something original. That's not, you know harkening back to former characters or yeah whatever i just think creativity is um or the there's a the canvas is just so large for something like this yeah um Um, yeah i mean that's definitely exciting um i wonder if any of these i know that the benioff and weiss show the game of thrones creators they were rumored to be doing an old republic uh, movie you know they mm-hmm. they dropped they have since you know dropped out of whatever they were developing but i wonder if any of that development 
has been kind of like moved over to any of these shows. Uh, I know this one yeah. is New Republic, which wouldn't be the same thing, but um, mm-hmm. I don't know. It could be. Because I know um, they've done that. My understanding is that's kind of how Mandalorian came to be is that was, you know, they Josh Trank had been developing the Boba Fett show and then mm-hmm. to from what I gather, they kind of like took a lot of that and like moved it into Mando. But right. No, I mean, makes sense. And then the the um, Kenobi was a I think it was intended to be a movie at first, and then they decided to do. Um, I, I believe James Mangold. And so it's either James it. Mangold was doing, <laughs> then was going to do the Boba Fett movie after Trank, or either he was doing Kenobi. I don't, it's been so, so much turnover in Star Wars sure. uh, since with this new era. So it's hard to keep it all right. straight, but um, yeah. Um, the next one, the Lando show. Mm-hmm. Um, I I told you this when it was announced. I just don't. I've never had a ton of fondness for his character. I don't hate him. I just yeah. He doesn't. I don't know. He doesn't resonate with me as I, much as others. I like Lando in the original trilogy. Uh, I mean, even in I agree. Even Empires, in he was Rise of Skywalker. I thought they doped him up enough to where he could function on set. Um, Did they mention if this was? <laughs> yeah. Did they mention if this was like um, Glover? Um, That's the thing. I don't Lando know or... if. I assume that this is going to be Glover. Maybe, um, maybe Billy D. Maybe there's a time like maybe they could have Billy D. Like at the beginning of it, kind of reminiscing and doing some sort of like, um, some sort of, uh oh, um, like where he's telling a story and then it jumps back to his younger version. Um, sure. I, yeah, I just, I mean, I thought as solo has been the weakest to me. I know that you liked it. Solo was kind of the, the weak link. And I, cause I know that a lot of people haven't, have been kind of hit or miss with the new era of star Wars stuff. I, I for the most part enjoyed everything. Uh, had my issues with last Jedi, last Jedi. And, um, Solo was just kind of like a fine movie, but just a little forgettable for me. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought Glover was fine as Lando, but I, th- I just, I don't know, different actors playing these beloved characters. Sure. It's just not something I'm interested in seeing. Um, right. I assume that if it is, Glover, uh, I imagine that you'll get um, what's his name that played uh, Alden Ehrenreich. I, I imagine he'll show up at some point in this show. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I know that a lot of people have been campaigning for a the continuation of what they had mm-hmm. intended with Solo uh, as far as his arc. Yeah, um, I, I feel like the campaigning is more for the the arc beyond him, like the Darth Maul yeah, yeah, yeah. and Red Crimson Dawn. Then yeah. for so there's a way for I feel like there's a way for them to kind of at least touch on that kind of stuff mm-hmm. with some of these shows. Um, you would think that even if it doesn't mean, I mean, you honestly would think that they would loop that into Kenobi uh, mm-hmm. somehow because. Right. They have that history, and apparently, spoilers, Kenobi does end up killing him again. Whoa, whoa, uh, what? In the Clone Wars, I believe it's Clone Wars. Um, yeah. This is coming from somebody that just know. I I just, you know, I didn't watch it. I just, <laughs> Huge I, Clone I Wars fan, things. Brandon. Okay. <laughs> um, Brandon's kind of a big deal. I mean, you would think that's canon, so they would have to... Sure. Behold of that. But I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, the Lando thing is kind of like, all right, we'll see. I mean, yeah. Again, a little bit for everybody. If that's something you're into, I don't I mean, know what it, co- I don't know what again, type I'll of say, show it'll be as far as like a a tone. Um, yeah. Or a, you know a genre. Um, 
but for any of these shows and movies, like it's like I'll give any of I'll give all of them a chance. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, yeah. like I was not even I wasn't. You remember I wasn't super hyped about Mandalorian right. before it came out, and I freaking love it. Yeah. Um. But I guess kind of moving away from shows for a second, the Rogue Squadron movie um mm-hmm. was announced it's gonna be directed it's the only by movie that was announced uh, yeah I think. it's gonna be directed by patty jenkins um and it, speaking of that it kind of gives you kind of get the feeling that they're finally moving away from that like trilogy model and they're gonna just like make cool star wars movies i hope um, so part of me feels like just because they're such a behemoth of a studio that they're they always keep a little bit of a mm-hmm. door cracked open for sequels, sure. depending and on how successful. I mean, they're it, doing it. Again, we'll get like, to it, but they're doing it with, you know, Rogue One was intended to be, you know, its own thing as far as no sequels to Rogue One, but now they're doing an Andor show. Right. Uh, I'm sure. just kind of feeling. But it was kind of cool to see this. Um, they they kind of announced or uh, showed a, I don't know what you want to call it, behind the scenes thing with, Patty Jenkins mm-hmm. kind of describing her motivation for um, taking on the director's role for this one. Um, just to kind of summarize, her dad was a fighter pilot, um, and it sounds like he died in action, I guess. Yeah. Um, man, camera's killing me tonight, Brandon. <laughs> That's what you get for having such a fancy camera. It might be it might be audio only night for Ryan. We'll see. Um but it was cool to see kind of how she um put like put together her she she described two loves Star Wars and um I guess fighter pilots or yeah. um and they had a they just had a cool little video they put together of her roller skating out onto a um runway and yep. putting on a flight suit or X-Wing or um, Rebel flight suit and walking towards a X-Wing at the end. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I definitely dug how they kind of tied it in, how she actually has a history with that. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, it, I, I'm excited to see what she does with it. Um, I played Rogue Squadron, the video game. I believe it was Nintendo 64. When it can't had come out, oh gosh, this was forever ago. Um, I was a wee mm. lad. Um, I remember. I, I remember. Wee lad. Yeah, I remember really enjoying that game. This was when that's basically all. Well, besides books, this is like that's mm-hmm. like the all that you had as far as Star Wars new content was like the video games that Lucas Arts would put out. Um, sure. But yeah, it'll be. I mean, we don't really have a lot of details. Uh, Besides, I mean, yeah, it, I mean, it seems it, like it's going to be Top Gun mixed with, you know, Star Wars. Um, right. Which could be cool. And I, I'll be honest, like, <laughs> I've enjoyed the, one of the things I've enjoyed the most about Mandalorian, especially this season, has been the, um, I guess you can't really call them all space battles, but Starfighter type stuff that they've been doing so it'll be cool to see it yeah it'll be cool to see a show kind of oh yeah i mean kind of um just the way those sequences have been executed with this budget mandalorian Mm -hmm. i can't imagine how a movie budget uh, oh i know will look and feel and be executed it's exciting they've taken a lot of one thing i've noticed too about mandalorian they've taken a lot of kind of the um shot principles of like force awakens where they've done kind of those they even did it in the last episode actually with the tie fighters where they have those kind of ground to air shots Mm -hmm. like shaky cam ground to air shots where it kind of gives you the um perspective but it's just cool to see that kind of stuff um on the on screen but like explored more and more and as you increase the budget the more crazy i'm sure they can (laughs) Um, make that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. that'll be a fun one. And um, sounds like at least they've got the the, the right director who's going to have some passion about it. So um, yeah, for sure. No, that's exciting. I'm, I'm 
very interested to see what that ends up being. I think it, what was it like 2023 that that one's coming? Out? Um, yes, that was 2023. Yeah. Um, and then kind of the last, um, live action show that they mentioned, we kind of talked about it earlier was the Andor show. Mm-hmm. They showed um, a little behind awesome. the scenes, like making yep. of almost a little glimpse. The, um, and it was kind of cool to see who's the, I always forget the actor's name. Diego Luna. Um, Diego Luna. They showed a little interview with him where he talked about how it was so much fun to, <laughs> shoot rogue one but it was also bittersweet because it was you know gonna be a one-off thing but right. then got the opportunity to do this so that was kind of cool to see um but i rogue one is one of those movies that really has grown on me over the years um every time i watch it uh it's kind of the opposite of the last jedi every time i watch it i get more and more respect for it yeah um which is and also interesting. Is that's another interesting, you know, piece of Star Wars because it's another one of those movies that was butchered. Not you know, butchered in this case, maybe for it, the better of the movie, um, mm-hmm. reshot a lot uh, of the third act, especially. Um, still, part of me would love to see what that, or you know, what Evans' original. Uh, movie was going to be but yeah I mean I thought that this was a case where it actually still came out to be a good movie but I still am curious just like I'm sure. very curious to see what Solo would have been uh, mm-hmm. but um, but yeah uh, Cassie and Andor not a character again not a character I'm just, like kind of chomping at the bit to see uh, expanded okay. upon but uh, you know I'm still I'm still going to watch it. I'm still interested to see, and I'm willing to be, uh, you know, as far as, um, you know, I, I would this, like to I be mean, surprised. This falls into that bucket too. Like with, for me with Mandalorian, like I just, I wouldn't have thought that I would like this show as much as I did mm-hmm. or as much as I do. Um, so it'll, it'll be a fun one to, and that, that, that's also one of those where, so much cool world building that they can do yeah um, i know that um i assume besides diego luna i assume that k2so um will play a part mm-hmm. in it uh i believe yeah. that was actually alan tudyk is actually confirmed as being a part of that show um nice. yeah it'll be interesting to see see where they go with it and what you know it seems like it's going to be kind of a more of a uh, espionage type th- show, yeah. Uh, underground uh, spy show, maybe. Um, mm. Which you know, I like the genre. So, I'm, right, so. I'm, I'm all for giving that one a try. Um, then, so then we've got kind of three um, animated remaining here. Yeah, so there's the Bad Batch, which is the Clone Wars spinoff, um, a droid story, which they describe as a epic journey that will inter- introduce us to a new hero guided by R2-D2 and C-3PO. Yeah. I and mean, that's looking like it's going to be more of a kid's show. Yep. Um, and then Visions, which I'm actually pretty excited about um, just because I love anime animation Mm -hmm. um, and this is going to be anime Um, says it celebrates the Star Wars galaxy through the lens of the world's best Japanese anime creators Um, yeah so go ahead no I was just going to say did you have you seen any of the um, I think it's Disney XD that puts out these little like mini uh, Star Wars retellings in like a anime style um they're, they're, it's on the star wars kids youtube channel i watch them on luna they're actually really well done um they're short they're like 40 seconds to like a minute and a half um just like they basically come on uh during commercials on disney xd mm-hmm. um but it basically tell that it's a way to retell the story of 
I guess the Skywalker saga to young kids, uh, but through like Interesting. very stylized anime. Um, sure. I'm wondering if that's kind of what inspired them to do this, um, because mm-hmm. that the, I mean I, I that's not my preference for animation, but I really did like those little shorts that they they did for Disney XD. Um, yeah. So I mean, this is something that I could I could see myself kind of accidentally enjoying uh at Mm -hmm. on paper it's just not something that i'm super into but we'll see sure gotcha yeah i mean i you know i grew up growing up i was a big fan of um dragon ball z and a lot of the gundam stuff and even with more recently um dc animation has kind of tapped into that animation style um Mm -hmm. and i've loved that so i'm excited to see another one of my loves be given the anime treatment yeah i can tell you Uh, that the droid story show will definitely be played in my house um because i do have (laughs) a kid and i i will take any kind of kid oriented star wars content that is out there i will put it on because i am trying to brainwash my kid as much as possible into star wars (laughs) so give it to me um Cool. So I guess we can kind of jump into a little bit of the Marvel stuff. Um, Okay. And as far, so as far as they kind of went through and had, they they basically gave the same treatment to the Marvel announcements as um, they did to Star Wars, where they basically went through, listed a bunch of projects and, um, for ones that were a little bit further down in the pipeline than others, they had little um, kind of sizzle reel type stuff or title cards or behind the scenes, whatever. Yeah. Um, but they gave, they gave little updates here and there that I thought were cool. Um, like stuff where like Tim Roth is returning for the she Hulk movie as abomination from Mm -hmm. the first mcu movie (laughs) is it considered Um, the first one and i think so i thought iron man was a i'm pretty sure iron man came out before incredible hulk oh maybe it is i don't know i just know that it's a part of the mcu and no one ever realizes that it's part of the mcu because it's not mark ruffalo right (laughs) um this would be i guess the second character to return from that movie as far as the actor uh what, what's his name uh the general um, oh yeah what is his name man i totally just connected those dots nice uh, um i couldn't even tell you i can't think of but i know name. who you're talking about yeah um but we haven't had i mean his daughter um also can't think of her character's name but Liv tyler played her in the incredible hulk movie she hasn't so come into play yet, but Mark Ruff, Mark Ruffalo is supposed to be in this She Hulk series. <clears throat> so Iron Man came out May second, two thousand eight, and Incredible Hulk came out June thirteenth, two thousand eight. Right? Yeah, <laughs> like a month apart. Yeah. Well, there Hulk was put out by Universal. This was yeah. the rights where I mean they and that they Universal still apparently has the distribution rights for Hulk and that's why you don't see a Incredible Hulk movie, uh, any <laughs> at all. He can be used as a secondary character, but he can't be used as a primary character, yeah. or they gotta pony up with Universal to do so. Sure. Um. Um. So Thunderbolt some of the, Ross, some That's of the- what I was thinking of. Gotcha. Yep. So to kind of um, just list off a few of the movies that they talked about, um, the new Black Widow movie, um, Shang Chi, and the Legend they're making of a Black Ten Widow Rings. movie. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> that one feels like the should have come out three years ago. <laughs> this <Yeah>. point. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Eternals or Eternals. Um, there's Spider Man three. That's not titled yet, I don't believe. Mm-hmm. Um, that one was not mentioned in the um, 
investors day presentation because it's Sony property. Um, Thor, Love and Thunder, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Black Panther 2, Captain Marvel 2, She-Hulk Show, Miss Marvel, um, Moon Knight, Blade. So there's <laughs> a ton of Marvel projects coming out also. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we don't have to... There wasn't... I feel like, there to me at least, it didn't seem like there was as much new news for these movies um, as there was for the Star Wars projects. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I mean... Yeah, a lot of this stuff we already knew about. They had already been trailed. Obviously, Black Widow, we knew a lot about. Sure. supposed to come out this year. Um, <laughs> Known about it for a long time. <laughs> um, Loki, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, you know, all that stuff. WandaVision. Right. They showed a lot of... The, the Loki, I guess they showed an actual trailer for Loki. What did you think about that trailer? Hey, you're back. Um, do I? I said, yeah. <laughs> Watch my my battery. <laughs> it's going to go out two seconds. Second. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the, I'm going to be honest with you. I watched that Loki trailer. I was sitting at the table with Katie, and the first thing I said after I turned it off, I was like, "That looks like a hot mess." Think so? <laughs> I don't know, man. I yeah. thought uh, I, lo- I it was surprising. Yeah. Um, I think it it could be it could be cool. I mean, I like yeah, Tom Hiddleston. I just, I like... It just looks so chaotic to me. I don't know. I'm may, maybe too. I've I've also been kind of. I'm so, I'm so over Loki in the movies. Like I feel like he's just like a whack a mole. He just like keeps popping up. Well, <laughs> in I mean, every yeah, it's true. Um. So I don't know. I, I'm sure that that's poisoning my reaction to the trailer yeah. to some extent. I just think it, it could be. We haven't really seen him without thor in the mix and so it could be mm-hmm. interesting to see how they treat his character without that yeah. tie um but sure. i i liked the trailer um and it but seems like it seems like it. they're gonna do some like <laughs> alternate history type stuff um yeah but um yeah we'll see uh the um how do you want to? How do you want to do this? As far as what we want to hit upon, I mean, I guess uh, me personally, I don't really have anything to say about Black Widow. I don't really care uh, to see anything else from Black Widow. I'll watch it. I'm not super excited for it, um, but you know, yeah, it's... this is the this is the least excited I've been about a Marvel movie ever. So I mean, I'll watch it. I'm sure, but I'm whenever it's free. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think, uh, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I've, I've been on the record as saying that she's kind of the least compelling character in that bunch for me. It's a shame because um, they got a really great actress playing her, but it's like, yeah, I, mean, I just don't care. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, so there's that I mentioned Eternals, Shang-Chi. They, they did, they just talked about them. They didn't really, they just said mm-hmm. that like what they've finished, they're almost finished filming. Shang Chi, or they yep. just finished it. I can't remember, but they they just, just wrapped it. Yeah. Um, um, Thor: Love and Thunder. Um, also, didn't really. I know they're supposed to start filming that one beginning of the year, correct? Yes, I think January. <clears throat> um, the yeah, so Taika Waititi is returning for that one, um, and not announced in the. Um, pan or in the Investors Day presentation, but Jane Fo- Natalie Portman's character Jane Foster is going to be coming back for that one. Which should be kind of cool. Lady Thor. Um. Also, Sif the, was announced this week, I believe. Yeah, Jamie Alexander. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a good one. Um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. That one is besides Spider Man. That is really the main project that I'm looking forward to. Yep, I agree. For, um, well, those are very Marvel. much intertwined, uh, it seems, as far as overlap is concerned. Because we yeah. know that Cumberbatch I, is going to be so. in Spider-Man 3 or whatever it's going to be called. Um, I'm also very excited to see Sam Raimi's sensibilities um, for that one. 
Um, yeah. The thing about Sam yeah, Remy so, is, for me, is he's lost a little bit of his luster over the years, but I hope that he can kind of regain a little bit of that. You know, mm-hmm. uh, his. I, I think I texted you the other day because with all the Spider Man news, I've been watching the the uh, older movies, the Tobey Wire movies, mm-hmm. and it's so funny to me, like the the Spider Man Two Doc Ock scene where they, you know, the arms in the hospital room, yeah. or the start like flailing around and attacking people and you just see like the chainsaw like yeah. fly up in the air it's just so like evil dead like right. <laughs> yep it's so funny to me um yeah so yeah that, that one's gonna be a fun one and i dr strange is another if i was gonna pick a marvel movie that i was not that high about when i watched it the first time and it's kind of grown on me since i've watched um dr strange would be on that list mm-hmm. So it's, to... it's interesting that um, that he is directing this one just because of mm-hmm. everything we're hearing about, you know, Spider Man and how how much yeah. of you know his movies they're kind of bringing over through what we assume multiverse, you know, sure, and the multi, you know, Doctor Strange uh, connection. I wonder if any of that carries over uh like if we have some you know like obviously we know cumberbatch is going to be in spider-man but i wonder if any of those characters maybe mcguire's spider-man ends up in strange somehow mm-hmm. you know and that'd uh, be cool um yeah. or whatever you know like or sure it's just it's pretty open-ended i guess we can kind of might as well kind of talk about the um Spider-Man three news since those movies are to some extent yeah. inevitably. Well, they didn't really connected. touch on Spider-Man three much, probably because it's a Sony pictures sure. production, but they have their hands in it. There's over the last, um, really two or three weeks now, I guess there's been a ton of casting announcements and rumors for that movie. Yep. Um, <laughs> and it just kind of sounds like it's, the Spider Verse in live action. Right. Um, they have officially announced that Benedict Cumberbatch is going to be involved, which you know ties in with Multiverse of Madness thing we're talking about. Um, Jamie Foxx's Electro from Amazing Spider Man Two. Uh, apparently, he may look different. Well, that's the thing is, um, just because it's Jamie Foxx playing Electro doesn't mean it's that universe's Spider Man. Sure. Amazing Spider-Man 2 Electro. It could be a parallel, sure. different, slightly right. different version of Electro. Yep. Um, same thing with they've already they they've really already got the J. Jonah Jameson tie in. They want to do. This J. Jonah yeah. Jameson that's in that made a cameo at the end of the last Spider-Man movie is not the same McGuire J. Jonah Jameson. It's just sure. parallel universe, you know, different world. Um so they they also announced Alfred Molina from Spider-Man, who played Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2. Yep. Um, and then, obviously, J.K. Simmons returning for the um, third movie as well. Um, and then the rumored list is just... Everybody. If you, if you, yeah, if you were going to fan cast Spider-Man <laughs> movie, multiverse movie, that's pretty much everybody. Um, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Willem Dafoe, who played um, Green Goblin in the original with Tobey. Emma Stone, who played Gwen Stacy in The Amazing Do you Universe. Think we're getting Spider Gwen. Because, Possibly. I mean, Emma's, her character, spoilers, died in Amazing Spider Man 2, but maybe the <laughs> version that she's coming back as is the Spider Gwen version. I'll, I mean, they did the same yeah. thing in uh, Into sure. the Spider Verse. Um, but where uh, her. One Spider way or another, Gwen, her Peter died. Spider Gwen is going to be involved. Sooner than later, I imagine. Oh yeah, I mean Some it's kind they of, have to. Um, it'd be a missed right. opportunity if they don't capitalize on that. I just want she, um, Emma Stone so, for whatever reason. Emma Stone seems a little old for Spider. So I'll be honest with you, she I did not like her in in the role in the Amazing Spider Man um, movies for Gwen. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a huge Emma Stone fan in general, so. That could be part of it for me. Um, but I'm like, 
Kirsten Dunst was like perfect casting for MJ in the original trilogy for me. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, and I, I also kind of, I think I've told you before with Garfield, he, to me, he is like the perfect in costume Spider-Man, the way he carries himself and like Mm -hmm. his banter, just kind of like the chippy. Yeah. But his Peter Parker wasn't a little too cool. Yeah. Like, so I think, I think maybe it's, it's the combination of those characters and how they interact. And I don't know. It just, her character didn't do it for me. And, um, gotcha. The amazing series, but uh, you know, again, it's one of those things where like, maybe they are changing things and she can, She's gonna be a little different or whatever. Yeah. Um, I and mean, that's the cool thing is that you it even though you're you you're using these same actors, you don't have they they're not like obligated to pull the exact same version of those characters that right. they played or portrayed. A lot of them uh, whom are are dead in their universes, so they're probably not pulling those same exact versions. Yeah. Um, Multiverse is licensed to do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I think I cut um, you off before you got to the rest of the list. Um, no, yeah. So we Kirsten Dunst is rumored to return, um, and then also Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio mm-hmm. um, from the second movie is also rumored to return. So yeah, the for whatever reason it's funny. I like I, whenever a superhero movie does this, where they like list a cast like this. My immediate reaction is like, don't do Spider Man three again. I know. Don't well, that do thing, it. Everybody's <laughs> gut rest. Like, all right, guys, we're getting a little, a little carried away here. Too many characters to balance out. Mm. But yeah, you know, you like to hope they learn their lesson. But you know, we'll see. I mean, I also, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's things that haven't hit our radar yet. I would imagine that uh, Tom Hardy's Venom, Eddie Brock, is gonna you know, play yeah. a part. It's, it seems like, it seems like they're also maybe going to use this as a setup for a Sinister Six type movie on the mm-hmm. Sony side of things. Not the MCU, yeah. I don't think, but um, maybe that's how they kind of, you know, a, a couple, was it last year that Sony and Marvel had I'm, separated? Like they weren't going to continue yeah. and then they worked it I'm out. I'm very but. excited to see how, I'm really excited for this movie because I I love the character of Spider Man and I love I like I really have enjoyed Tom Holland's performance, but I really want to see him like flex his muscles and then not I'm Tony Stark's baby boy <laughs> way. Like I want to see like more traditional Spider Man. I feel like the Sony stuff is gonna give yeah. more the opportunity. Well, to do uh, that, one know? thing that we did forget to put down was uh, Daredevil. Um, ah, I think yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think was that rumored that or official? I don't that. remember. It's so hard to remember what's. I could be wrong. And, and, and it official is like, way. was it Hollywood Reporter or was it Den of <laughs> <Right>. Geek? <laughs> or you right. know, like who are we talking about here? Yeah. Uh, right. And then you know, there's also been rumor that Kingpin from that same Daredevil series uh, could mm-hmm. play a part. They need a Kingpin in Spider Man um, so badly. Go watch, or if you haven't played the new Spider-Man game, um, well, not new, I guess a couple years old now at this point, but mm-hmm. um, it's just a Spider-Man, and I, even the uh, the old animated series, like, it's just, it's such a perfect Garrett villain for a Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Um, or universe, so it'd be fun to see them do that. And I uh, have been on the record, too, saying that I loved... Um, the Netflix Daredevil series. So yeah. um if that is if that does end up happening, I will be stoked to see him. It would be a really great way to pull him in cuz you know the the continuity when it comes to those Netflix Marvel shows started off like, yeah, they're connected. We're, you know, we drop little hints and mm-hmm. then they're like, uh, maybe the incident? Not y- yeah, you remember the incident? <laughs> from way back the incident in New York. Right. I mean, <laughs> this is a way to tie it in without ever. I mean, yeah, right. you know. Sure. It's, you know. Yeah, I'm. I I'm all for it. Um, as long as they do it, <laughs> as long as they do it tastefully. I just don't want it to be a, you know, <laughs> oh character overload. There's a lot of 
I feel like you could easily fall into the trap too of like feeling like the need to like yeah pay like pay respects to all these characters and then it just gets into that like okay like <laughs> well, who's going to get their one liner next <laughs> it's so funny too because across the pond DC's doing a very similar thing with Flash mm-hmm. you know unfortunately for us Marvel's beating them yep. to the punch and <laughs> Always going to be second fiddle. <laughs> uh, so we'll have to deal with that. But uh, it's all yeah. good. It's all good. Um, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so then we kind of move on to we move on to Black Panther 2. Um, they're not going to recast Chadwick Boseman. Um, and instead it sound they I don't think they announced it officially, but it sounds like they're gonna have um is it Shuri? Well, I don't Shuri. know if they've given any indication yet yeah, it is Shuri, but I don't know if they've given any indication as as to who will pick up that mantle. Yeah. Um I I imagine you've gotta have a Black Panther in Black Panther too. Well yeah, yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> yes. Undoubtedly somebody else will take that role yeah but it won't be the t'challa role it'll be it seems it just seems too easy for them to use her so like that's why I... well yeah it does it's it's the obvious choice i mean mm-hmm. i just don't i mean a lot of people were i guess kind of campaigning for her to take over the iron man role um because yeah. she is a techie um that's another show they announced was um iron heart iron heart yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which will be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that's another of the. Th- I mean, we haven't even got <laughs> like the list is so. It's like, it's yeah, it's absurd. It's like I mean, we there's so much to go through. I mean, and a lot of this is just like oh they, uh, yeah they reiterated yeah we're still doing this like Blade we're still doing that you know uh, right. We're still we're we're doing another Ant Man movie. We're doing you know Miss Marvel. Yeah, Miss Marvel. <laughs> and Miss Marvel is going to play a part in Captain Marvel too. And right. James Gunn is gonna do Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Holiday special. <laughs> while he's shooting, and they're also doing an I Am Groot, a little cartoon yep. animated thing. Suffice it to say, the uh, studios over the over there at Disney it's are like, gonna be uh, well. Kevin Foggy is like the Oprah of all the Marvel characters. You get a show, and you get a show, and you yeah. get a movie. You know, it's like everybody's got a show. Don Cheadle's getting a show for War Machine. Yep. Um, Armor Wars, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, Secret Invasion, Samuel L. Jackson, Ben Mendelsohn, they're getting a show. Mm-hmm. Moon Knight, Oscar yeah, Isaac's going to be in Moon Knight. <clears throat> that one, I'm that one, I'm intrigued um, to check out just because. It's always been a cool character to me. I don't know a ton about him, but I just like I like the look and um, the concept behind it. Yeah. Um, I don't know much about it, other than Oscar Isaac's play in the lead role, and that's that enough. That is enough to excite me because uh, I love same I love him. Um, I love him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I <don't>, so you know, <laughs> putting my I always come back to putting on my DC hat. It's just this is one of those things where. There's there's projects here and there that I'm excited about, um, but I just I don't like the fa- phase one, phase two, phase three for me. I remember like every project that came out, like I was just pumped for mm-hmm. it, um, and I feel like they're taking like they're they're moving from a lot of those like what they turned in. You know, Iron Man's not necessarily like wasn't necessarily like a huge marvel character before he had his own movie but right like they're kind of moving on to these like b and c level um heroes which is cool like i'm all about yeah it's really expanding on that kind of place they can go at this point but But it's just i just don't have the same like no i mean it's definitely for a lot of this stuff it's definitely not as that is exciting on paper um but I mean, we'll see. Oh yeah, uh, Fantastic Four. Yep, that one too. From uh, the director of the other Spider Men's. Um, 
What's his name? So kind of the first foray into the Fox properties from um, Disney. So, well, depending on when it comes out, I guess Blade is also is Blade. Blade was Sony. Uh, Can't remember. Man, I don't know. Blade was New Line. Yeah, I don't Um, think they were. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, but well, you imagine that's kind of the first step to moving towards X Men, which I guess that's kind of something that I look forward to is because I loved all the you know they're they were they're very hit and miss, but I love the world, the mutant world that mm-hmm. um, Fox created. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the take on Disney take on what did um movie. what do you think about the what if trailer. Um, I was actually pretty excited about that one. I the concept before sounded kind of meh to me, mm-hmm. um, but actually seeing some visuals was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you saw right when Disney Plus launched, they put out a little featurette on all the stuff that was going to be coming in the you know like the future, and they had a few mm-hmm. scenes from What If on there, and I was like, oh, this looks. Yeah. It could be pretty cool. I love the animation mm-hmm. style. I think the animation looks great. great. Um, and the concept is is also cool. I mean, it's like Elseworlds I like for that DC. They're getting getting folks to like legit folks back to voice act for some of the stuff too. Yeah, yeah. It um, seems like a big part this might be Chadwick's last thing that comes out as far as because I think he recorded his dialogue for it for his Star yeah. Lord. I mean, he's playing T'Challa, but as Star Lord. Sure. Um, but yeah. Um so yeah, I mean <laughs> we said this episode was gonna be short. What are we running now? <laughs> well, an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> um but yeah, so uh, I mean that uh, we just wanted to give a rundown of we kind of talked about stuff the night of, um, mm-hmm. but we wanted to kind of break this stuff down on a Cape Cast so episode you, and you said that as far as Movie wise, we're both, I think, kind of on the same page. We're really excited for Spider Man 3, Spider Man Far From Home 3, or whatever we we're going to call it. Uh, it's feels, it doesn't feel like we should call it Spider Man 3. There's been a Spider Man Home 3. Run. Uh, <laughs> Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness as well. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm interested in uh, Thor, Love and Thunder. I'm super interested of how Christian Bell plays into that. Um, Agreed. I did look up the because I wasn't familiar with the villain. Mm-hmm. Um, he looks really cool in the comics and the illustrations, so it'd be cool to see how. Yeah, yeah. Christian Bale as a villain is not something that we see a lot of. So, um, mm-hmm. agreed. That'll be that'll be cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll, as far as the movies, just please don't make Thor fat again. Don't yeah. do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Ryan is not a fan of that. I'm not either. For don't. The rest. Don't don't ruin uh, this movie like Endgame. <laughs> as far oh as gosh, the shows, I saw, a, though, I saw a screenshot of that the other day of one of the scenes where he was like sitting down with his stomach out. I'm like, God, it's like the worst fat suit ever, too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, this is like, come on, guys, <laughs> what's the budget for this movie? <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. Anyways, sorry. What uh, as far as the the shows, Disney Plus shows, which one is kind of the highest on your on your what radar? If. What if? Okay. For sure. Yeah, I mean, that, I'm excited to see that one. I'm not as like, I don't, because I guess probably because it doesn't move the, the overall MCU narrative along. Um, mm-hmm. I guess it's a it's a pro and a con for me. Like, I'm excited because it's, you know, yeah, it's probably a one and done thing and an uh, an else worlds type thing. Not to bring up DC, mm-hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I am excited for that. I don't know as far as the other ones. I'm not. I don't really. I'm not really interested in one division that much. Um, Agreed. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It looks all right. Um, I can't do that. I just. I can't do. I'm, it. I mean, I'm not excited for it. So they took they took one of my favorite my well my favorite MCU movie is Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. which Captain America Winter Soldier, which I think is 
pretty common among folks. They like that movie. Um, and I've just like every movie since Winter Soldier, I just feel like they've just like slowly destroyed that character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like his look, how he acts, like I, I can't believe I they cut now his he's now hair. he's like clean clean cut yeah. Boy Scout with a like I'm just, I don't can't know can't cut his hair. Um, seriously though, come know. on, what's wrong with you? And you know if you were gonna redeem it, give the guy the shield. But no, he doesn't get it. His best friend doesn't get it. Oh gosh, I feel like Al. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that that is definitely. Kind of a, eh, I don't know. I thought I was. I'll say this: I was impressed with the production value of it. Um, it was a little. I'd agree. It was on a bigger scale than I assumed it would be, considering mm-hmm. it's a show. Um, I have more. I have more. Um, I will say, seeing the little trailer they ran, I'm a little more interested in it than I was before. But I'm still. Well, it's also got just, um, what's his name, uh, Kurt Russell, Wyatt Russell's um, playing. Um, I guess what's his what's the the Captain America that they like? Um, oh, I guess Shield puts um, in place. Yeah, it's kind of like a um, Homelander type character. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, also, I liked uh, Baron. What's his last name from Civil War? Yeah. Baron Zemo, I think. <clears throat> yeah, Zemo. Yeah, I'm interested to see how they kind of um, evolve that character. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm. I so and the other thing too is I don't like how Winter Soldier's been treating, and I just I'm not a Falcon fan. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I'm not either. I, I mean, never, I don't know. He was all right in the first movie he was in, but I, I just he's kind of. He's a little mad for me. He's a little obnoxious. Yeah. That's Anthony Mackie for you. Yeah. Wait, people watch Man of Steel like more than once? <laughs> I'll never forgive him for that interview. <laughs> Ever. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, he seems like an all right dude, but uh, yeah. He, he, cu- he cut me deep with that one. Um. Uh, yeah. Anyway, right. Ma- Loki might be my most like excited show as far as one that I'm most excited for, based on what we've seen so far. Um, yeah. Hawkeye could. Be, I mean, it's filming now in our in out in your neck mm-hmm. of the woods. Um. Yeah. Wish we had an, a a person on the inside that could give us some details on it, but he turned it down. <laughs> what a loser. Uh, if anybody's interested in being a stand-in for Hawkeye, they need one bad. They do. <laughs> They'll ask you twice, apparently. Yeah. You're short enough. <laughs> you got to be real short. <laughs> uh, inside jokes. Got to love them. Yep. <laughs> um, if you watch if you watch uh, Cinema Machine last week, I guess. Or no, Cape Cast last week. Yeah. We had our friend Chris on and... He was offered the um, stand-in role for Renner's Hawkeye. Had to turn it down because he's got a big boy turn job. Turn it down. <laughs> yeah, he's a big shot. He's a he's an Oscar-winning actor now. So yeah, you might yeah. have you might have seen him in Black Panther as uh, computer operator <laughs> number three. Yeah, he dove behind the table yeah. so you couldn't see him. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I, uh, one thing I was going to ask you because I didn't ask you before is there a we were talking about um, Marvel shows you're looking forward to mm-hmm. and I kind of mentioned the Star Wars two Star Wars shows I'm most looking forward to what would you pick if you were going to ask or if you were going to pick the two shows that you're most looking forward to for Star Wars <clears throat> oh for Star Wars um mm-hmm. Ahsoka definitely, um, and Kenobi probably. Um, I mean, I think I mean I'm definitely on the same page as you as far as the acolyte. I know that's probably your top one. Um, 
I don't as far know, as man. concept. Kenobi's right up there. Kenobi and the Acolyte. Yeah. Close one, too. Yeah. That one's a close third, for sure. I I, I think Ahsoka and you know, Obi-Wan. I, dude, I love lightsabers, man. I'm sorry. People are like, oh, I don't want to see <laughs> sorry, lightsabers. sorry, Jeff. I'm sorry. I don't want to see lightsabers in Star Wars. Sorry, that's what Star Wars is. Okay? Right. You know, I love it. All right, I want lightsabers. I love Go lightsabers. Go watch Star Trek, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, sue me. I'm right there with you. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those are the, those are the definitely two for me. Cool. Cool. All right, Brandon. Yep. Um, think it's about time we wrap this one up. Um, but that was good. It's a good, lively discussion. Now we don't have to talk about Marvel for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've uh, hit our quota for that. We'll get back into some Snyder talk in a, in a few days, so yep. Yep. all will be well. <laughs> uh, good times. Indeed. Good times. Um, cool. So, yeah, just so you know, we um, will be recording our final uh, Mandalorian review um, of the season, um, I guess, early next week. So... Um, keep an eye out for that um, Mm -hmm. on our YouTube channel and as always if you love anything geek movie please follow us on um, Twitter at Cape Cash Show and if you're a fan of movies in general I invite you to follow us at Cinemachine Pod on Instagram and um, we kind of post everything for Cape Cast and Cinemachine there so it's a good catch all um so, Brandon, until next time, so long. Bye.